Shares of NVIDIA pulling back today as investors look ahead to the chip giant's GTC conference next week, where the chip giant is expected to de debut new techs. And our next guest just boosted his price target on the stock to $1,000 from $850 in anticipation of the big event. Joining us now is Matt Bryson, Wedbush Securities Senior Vice President of Equity Research for Hardware. Thank you for joining us today. Um, just big picture, what can we expect from this conference? There's a lot of attention on Blackwell and some of the new tech technology that they're bringing, but what's the overall vibe? Um, I, I mean, I think the overall vibe is is going to be positive. They're always very positive uh, during these GTC events. Um, a lot of what they talk about is very big picture. Um, it, it tends to be things that you might not see uh, for, for some time. Uh, but it, it, at the same time, Blackwell um, is a big deal. Uh, they've said before that they don't think they're going to be able to meet the demand for the product initially because it's so strong. Um, and so I think a lot of investor focus is going to be on exactly what that chip looks like, uh, when it will debut, uh, what it might be priced at. So Matt, what does this mean then for competitors? We know NVIDIA by far the leader within the space, but when you take a look at some of the rivals out there, specifically AMD, how far behind is that going to leave some of the other names within the space? I, I, that, that, that's a great question. Um, I, I, I think having said that, um, AMD has gotten, uh, I believe, four of the large U.S. customers to buy into their solutions. I, I think there's interest from the cloud, uh, the, 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 the cloud data centers in having a, a second source um, and having options. And so I, I think through 2024, uh, AMD is still going to ramp revenues. Um, you have another event out there uh, paralleling GTC. It's a startup called Severus. Uh, they're showing off their wafer scale chip. Um, again, they have a niche, uh, very high end training. Um, and I, I think they'll still do very well um, in that niche. Uh, and, and so I think there's demand for more than just NVIDIA. Uh, having said that, I, I think that NVIDIA and bringing the cadence of its products uh, to market faster is certainly doing its best to maintain its share lead. And Matt, I want to talk about another chip manufacturer factor here that's in the news, and that's Intel. Um, they were they were slated to get two and a half billion dollars from the Pentagon, but it looks like that's coming back. Could you just give us some of the some of the intel we have? This is based on a Bloomberg report from, I believe, yesterday. Yeah. So what Bloomberg is saying is uh, there was a uh, defense allocation. Um, it, it was going to be three and a half billion dollars. Uh, the a billion of that was going to come from Chips Act fund funds. Two and a half was going to come from uh, the the Pentagon, um, and, and that the the Pentagon is stepping away from from that funding. Um, I, I haven't been able to to validate that. Um, I, I think at the end of the day, Intel is going to be the the biggest single winner from uh, U.S. funds um, or U.S. funding of chip makers. Um, so. Um, do they get the full allocation? Do they not? Uh, I'm not sure from a does it matter perspective. Um, Intel said in the past that if, if they don't get what they think is the right level of funds, um, they may have a somewhat smaller scale out in, in the U.S. in, in terms of uh, production facilities. Um, but I, I don't think it really changes the story where with Intel, it's do they get their, their foundry process right? And if they get that process right, um, I, I think they're right back um, in, in contention as being you know, one of the main suppliers of server and PC chips. Matt, if we do see a little bit more momentum from some of NVIDIA's rivals out there, what is that then going to do, do you think, in the long term for the growth story there? Because when you take a look at, once again, 80% of growth here, the fact that the stock has been basically shooting up to the moon over the last 18 months, what does that then do to those comparison numbers a couple of years out? Um, I, I, that's a that's a great question. Uh, part of it is going to depend on on the growth of, of AI, and you know that's that it's really difficult to figure out exactly what the TAM of the market is right now. We we have a market that's growing um, at an explosive speed. You've had numbers thrown out there like uh, AMD talking about four hundred billion dollars in accelerator TAM um, in in twenty twenty seven. Um, if the market's growing to $400 billion, um, and, and AMD is right, uh, even if NVIDIA is losing share, they're, they're still growing at an accelerated growth rate through that period. 
Um, and, and so, uh, honestly, I, I don't I, I don't think it it, it matters. Um, the other thing to remember with Nvidia is they've done a lot to create a competitive moat. So. Um, yes, well, Microsoft is able to potentially use an AMD uh, by by doing its own back back background work on the on the software uh, to run the models. Um, not everyone's able to do that. Um, Nvidia in uh, its development of CUDA, in seeding CUDA in universities, uh, in funding startups, um, I, I think they're making it really difficult for uh, their competition to uh, take a, a bunch of share. Um, and, and so I, I think it's at some point um, NVIDIA remains uh, the, the market share leader, even if they don't have quite the same amount of share they have right now. Last question here, and I'll somewhat give you the floor. Any surprises that we might uh, see in the chip industry over the next year? Things not necessarily in uh, purview here for a Main Street investor, but that you might uh, see coming down the pike? Surprises. Um, or just one, it's something in general that uh, is sticking out to you that maybe we haven't touched on here. Yeah, no, so I, I, I think with regards to AI, people have been very focused on um, on, on the AI opportunity. They, they haven't thought as much about uh, the the ancillary uh, parts of the infrastructure that are needed to support um, AI. And so, in, in particular. Um, I, I'd call out the opportunity in memory. Uh, companies have been underinvesting in in DRAM and, and NAND for storage uh, for the last two years. Um, we started to see uh, that that dynamic shift, uh, more more so due to uh, producers limiting production versus demand picking back up. But you look at AI demands a ton of high bandwidth memory, um, so the, that drives memory demand. Um, that's more resources that the memory vendors can't spend on mainstream DRAM, mainstream NAND. And at the end of the day, AI is all about storage, right? Generative AI, um, you're generating uh, data, so you've got to store it. Um, and it's based on using a bunch of data to train models. Um, and, and so I, I think uh, the memory space is really one of my favorite spaces right now. Um, and I, I think that the names in that space, Micron, WD, do very well. Yeah, um, both near or at AI record pools. highs. Yeah. All right, Matt Bryson, Webbush Security Senior Vice President of Equity Research for Hardware. Thanks so much for hopping on with us this morning. We look forward to your reaction to the event next week.